Hello, <laughs> welcome to my kitchen once again. Um, I'm Chef Day, I'm founder of the Vegan Chef School, and we are now doing all of these uh, live recipes every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So happy Saturday. Um, so this is the new schedule. Um, I hope that that's okay for everybody and works for everybody. So I can't do Sundays, but like Sunday's always been like a family day for me. Um, so the plan is that eventually we will actually get to go and see our families. <laughs> so, so we are reserving Sundays for family day. But Sundays can be your day to catch up as well. So if you guys can't cook along with us live, um, you know, uh, which which some of you may not be able to do, then you've got something to catch up. And then Sunday would be a really, really great uh, time for you guys to be sharing the pictures of the recipes of ours that you've made um, on your cooking Sunday. Um, and also anything else that you've made, anything else that you made, that would be great, that would be great. Um, good morning to Colleen and Doug and Justine, uh, Lynn and Denise. Yes, happy, happy, happy Saturday. Um, I think it's very early when <laughs> for some people it is. Uh, George, good morning, good morning. Um, let me just see if we've got any more comments. There we go. Okay, so uh, so look, do let me know if you guys are cooking along today. Uh, we're not really doing any cooking today. It's, it's, I don't know what we'd call it. Create along. <laughs> Doesn't quite have the same ring to it. <laughs> so basically the recipe that we're making today, it can be raw if you want it to be. Um, so with raw food, uh, none of the ingredients go above 40 degrees. Um, so I'll give you the options for that. Um, so yes, it can be a raw recipe if you want it to be. You've just got to do things a slightly different way. Elaine, hello, hello. Uh, Pascal and Joss. Um, and I've heard that Joss it has kicked Justine out of the kitchen. So <laughs> but you know, you get kicked out of the kitchen but you get food made for you. So, you know, pretty good deal, pretty good deal. Okay, so onto our recipe today. As I said, um, it is a raw hummus, uh, but also it's a golden hummus. See, gold, gold, golden, there, there, there. <laughs> Doesn't get old. Doesn't get old. Um, yes, so golden hummus because we're gonna put turmeric in it. So you guys can put fresh turmeric in it as well, but I know that that can be quite difficult to get hold of. Again, that's another one of my freezer ingredients as well. So, you know, if you guys do come uh, uh, come upon it, but it's something that you can't get all the time, but you like to have it and you want you want to use it a lot more, then you can uh, put it into your freezer. So then it won't go off and you know, that type of thing. And so for anybody who has been getting rib food boxes, and I know that Justine started getting them, um, they do actually sell turmeric, which is amazing, which is really, really amazing. But you will end up like with, with quite a lot of it, which you probably won't want to get through um, before it goes off. So then you can just pop it in the freezer. Same with gal Galangal, um, lemongrass, uh, kefir lime leaves, uh, bay leaves, curry leaves, all go in my freezer. Okay, so, um, David, thank you for joining us again. Uh, lovely to see your pictures as well that you've been sharing in the community hub, but that's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so, uh, we've got someone being admin today. Is that Louisa? Louisa! Ah, oh, thank you for being admin today. Um, so Louisa will soon be off on her travels to Sicily. Um, so yeah, another one of our crew is going to somewhere sunnier, fair enough, uh, that has amazing ingredients. Also fair enough. I am swiftly behind you. <laughs> I really, really don't blame you at all. So yeah, Louisa um, has her sights uh, set on Sicily, uh, but it sounds like it's gonna be quite an adventure. So who knows where she's gonna end up? Uh, but I've told her to share with us lots of pictures of the amazing food uh, that she will be eating there and all the lovely uh, fruits and vegetables as well. That's one of the most amazing things about going to somewhere like Italy. It's just going around the food markets. And just seeing all the beautiful uh, fresh vegetables that are there and the fruit is absolutely amazing. I went to Modena a couple of years ago because I'm a huge fan of balsamic vinegar and just the, the fruits and veg that there. I was just like taking photos of them all the time. Other people take photos of scenery. I take photos of fruits and vegetables. 
There you go. They have my holiday snaps. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Justine says uh, that Joss is fed up of pasta. Okay, but it's good to know that Justine has been doing lots of homework with the Pro Chef course and has been trying out the pasta many times. Good, good, good. Um, okay, so, oh, we've got Rosario. Uh, who's in Seville, Spain, lovely, lovely, uh, and Khan, uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for bringing the jokes, uh, Annie says hello, 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 and Karen, hello, okay, right, on to our recipe today, um, so anybody who's cooking along today, the first thing that you need to do is you need to get some water onto boil, uh, I've got what we affectionately call here our kettle, it isn't a kettle, it's a saucepan, we don't have a kettle, not for any kind of like, you know, reason of uh, kettles being unhealthy or anything like that. It's just that our kettle broke and we've got saucepans and I didn't want to kind of like buy a new kind of like plastic -y thing and introduce more plastic into the world. So we use a saucepan. So this is our kettle. I'm gonna get my kettle onto boil now. So anybody who's cooking along at home, um, pop some water in your kettle and get it on now because we will, we will need that shortly. There we go. Right, uh, I'll just take you guys through our ingredients that we have. Oh, and actually, just to pop over to our picture again, so some of you guys may have seen that when you first came into, into the live, but for anybody who missed it, um, so uh, is golden hummus with cheat and chips. We've got like a couple of different uh, recipes for this on the website, one that is raw and one that isn't, so I decided I want to do the raw one today. Um, and so, you know, it's this lovely bright yellow colour from the turmeric. Um, as I said, you can use fresh as well if you want to. Uh, the ground, but the ground turmeric is absolutely fine because of course like that is what is more readily available. Uh, the ground turmeric gives it much more of a colour. Uh, the fresh turmeric gives it quite a zinginess, uh, but we do need to be careful how much we use. Um, so do be careful of that. So um, uh, in the uh, ingredients, I have said uh, one tablespoon of ground turmeric, um, uh, but that is um, is incorrect. So basically, guys, sorry about this. There we go. These are the right, okay, so so basically what's happened is it capitalised everything, which is really, really unhelpful when you're trying to distinguish between teaspoons and tablespoons, so I'm very, very sorry about that. But we have the right uh, ingredients along here. So anybody who's cooking along, just make a note of this. So it is one tablespoon of tahini, an awful lot of tahini in this. Um, I really, really like tahini, so, you know, that's fine. Uh, we've got one teaspoon of ground turmeric. Um, so not one tablespoon, one teaspoon of ground turmeric here. Uh, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Um, yeah, and the black pepper as well, quarter of a teaspoon. So, yeah, I'll have to watch out for that next time. Okay, so, um, as I was saying, like, with our ingredients, um, we have our uh, cashews here. So um, it's around a cup of cashews, um, and uh, I've got a bowl there that I'm going to put my uh, <laughs> I'm going to put my uh, cashews into, um, and that's because I don't want to just soak them in here. This doesn't have a huge amount of space in it, and if you soak anything um, in, you know, very kind of like small space, then what's going to happen is that the thing that is inside it that is soaking will swell up. Um, so we need a bit more space in here. So we're just gonna pop them into there. And when the kettle's done, we can we can pop some hot water into there. Um, so people who do, um, who, sorry, people who do want it to be completely raw, then you can just soak your nuts in water overnight. So basically, um, either with soaking nuts, to come back over here while we talk about soaking nuts. Um, so either you can do it the raw way, you know, where we're not going to be bringing the temperature to over 40 degrees, um, and so you can just soak it in uh, tepid water overnight, um, but then the nuts, you know, they need like longer to soak. Whereas this is a bit of a cheating way, it's a bit of a kind of like a quick method, you know, I love my quick lazy methods, um, where we're going to be adding boiling water to it. There are other people who actually like to boil their cashews 
and then blends them. I have found that it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. Um, so I prefer just to put the boiling water into that. Okay, so let me just see if we've got any more questions before we move on. Justine is very shocked that uh, I don't have a kettle. I know, I know. Up until 10 months ago, I didn't have a TV either. So, <laughs> you know, things are things are moving along in my, in my world. Um, uh, Gloria says, oh, hello, Gloria. Uh, amazingly, uh, I've got all the ingredients, but didn't get later. Oh, good, good. Uh, and Joss said, I love pasta. It's just once Justine starts cooking, she won't stop, and the dishwasher's broken. That's a very good point. Um, okay, uh, Khan is talking about hemistrokes. I'm sure there's lots of hemistrokes. And Gloria says, I thought it looked like a lot. Yes, yes, a tablespoon of turmeric is a lot, a lot. And Colleen has already guessed what is <laughs> underneath the rainbow? <gasps> okay, so let's bring you guys to the overhead shot so that you can that you can see. Uh, so this is what is underneath our rainbow today. You're very quick, Colleen. Honestly, you're very quick. So it is two ma rick. So this is a ma made with the made cross, and this was a, a brick. It's meant to be a brick. <laughs> So turmeric, uh, I like Pascal's, uh, yes, turmeric, and, and Doug's as well, turmeric brick. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so uh, my my water is, has boiled now, so I'm just going to pop this into, oh, into the bowl there. And just make sure that it's got enough to cover it, okay? Because these are going to swell up, and so whenever we're soaking anything, whether it's nuts or beans or anything like that, that's going to swell up, we need to make sure that there's ample water in there. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so um, back to our our ingredients. Um, yeah, so we've got our um our cashews soaking. So I hope that you guys who are cooking along. Uh, get your water boiled and then leave them to soak and they can just be doing their thing whilst we talk about the rest of the recipe. Okay, we have one tablespoon of tahini here. Now, as Nikki mentioned, you guys might not remember this, but I remember like all our shows. Uh, um, Nikki mentioned that the tahini is quite a specific um, flavour. Let's come back over here so that you guys can see me. Um, yeah, tahini is um, something you either love or you hate, uh, but your tolerance level is very, very individual to you. Um, so totally, you know, go with your own um, instincts on this. So, you know, if you don't like too much um, uh, tahini in your hummus, then dial down the amount that's in, because you can always add more. You can't take it away. It's going to be really... Wait, yeah, it's going to be really... It's going to be impossible to take it away. What you end up having to do is like... Uh, making more of the recipe if you added too much tahini. That's the only way to get around it. So err on the side of caution and you can just add, you know, one teaspoon if you want to, if you're not sure, like, you know, if you want to have so much tahini in it. I really, really like tahini. Um, so, you know, I've got one tablespoon there. Um, if you do want it to be completely raw, you can buy raw tahini. That's absolutely fine. Um, but I would specify um, that with the tahini, you use the uh, white tahini rather than the black because we want the colour to be vibrant with this. And we're going to go to to um, an effort to make sure that, that the brightness is there um, because it's golden hummus. So we want it to be bright. Um, and just to say as well, you know, this recipe is based on uh, golden lattes. So who doesn't love a golden latte? Aha. Uh -huh. I haven't had one of those in ages, actually. Okay, tonight, 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 definitely gonna have to have a golden latte. Um, so golden lattes, they were massive um, for quite a while on Instagram everywhere. And a golden latte is turmeric uh, with coconut milk and um, some black pepper and a bit of sugar, a bit of like coconut sugar or something like that. And it's absolutely delicious. So, 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 so nice. So nice. Can I just say that again? So nice. <laughs> so creamy and really, really great for anybody who is, um, uh, has, has any kind of issues with uh, inflammation. 
And so I used to have it when I would, would go to the gym quite a lot because um, I mainly would do weights and stuff like that. So it's something that, that can potentially um, give a lot of information um, in your diet. So I would make sure that if I was doing something like that, I would always have a golden turmeric uh, latte before I went to bed, uh, which was really, really lovely because it's a bit like having hot chocolate, you know, it's that kind of like, you know, when we talk about um, Ayurvedic food, you know, it's wet and warm and it's like a hug inside. Yeah, turmeric latte is like that as well. But not everybody likes turmeric latte. So, and I used to work for a client who was an ultra marathon runner and he didn't like, uh, he didn't like golden lattes at all, at all, could not convince him. Uh, but he loved hummus. He loved hummus. So, therefore, put one thing with the other thing. There we go. <laughs> so that's how I come up with new 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 recipes. Um, okay, so Glory says, "What did it taste like?" I've not opened the jar yet. Um, so tahini. Let me just taste it to see if I can. It has a slight bitterness to it, which I think is probably the thing that people don't like. It's very nutty. It's very nutty. So if you don't like uh, sesame seed or indeed if you're allergic to them, then you could use something like a nut butter. I wouldn't recommend peanut butter because I think the taste is too strong and you know, you'll know you end up with this like peanutty flavor to it, which um, I don't think would go, uh, but maybe like an almond butter um, would go would go really well. Um, so, but yeah, there's a slight bitterness to it, but I would say, yeah, just nutty. Yeah, I think so. I like it. I really, really like it. Really like it. Uh, Annie loves it too. Um, and let me just see if we've got any more questions. Ah, Connie said they call it golden milk here in the States. Uh, I, I, don't, well, I don't know why it started getting golden latte. Is that a British thing then? Maybe it's a British thing. Cause you know, we like, yeah, we, we, we like our lattes here. Um, and I use turmeric every day because of joint inflammation. It's a natural wonder. Yes, it is. It is absolutely amazing. Um, okay, and Gloria says she likes sesame. Okay, so you are likely to like this as well, the tahini. Uh, and I've made uh, tahini cookies before as well. Tahini cookies are really, really lovely. Um, so, and that's the thing like with tahini, tahini can be used with sweet things as well. Um, and in Middle Eastern countries, you'll find them uh, in, in sweet dishes too. Um, and there is even a spread that is tahini mixed with uh, date syrup, which is really, really lovely. I and mean, you can spread that on toast, really, really nice. Okay, anyway, back to our recipe. It's good that I'm talking because it just gives our cashews a little while to uh, get soft and soak and stuff like that. So there is a reason for me gabbing, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> honestly, it isn't just because I could talk about uh, food forever. Okay. And next we have our courgette. I have said in the ingredients to use one courgette, but I'm gonna use two here because my courgettes are tiny. Really, really tiny. Ah, and Doug said, yes, he fell in love with tahini when he lived in Israel. Yes, yeah, so countries like that, you know, use it in, in other ways, you know, not just in hummus. Um, and okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so we've got our courgette here. As I said, mine are quite small. Um, so I'm going to use one, probably one and a half of these, one and a half of these. Um, so just bear that in mind, people who are cooking along at home, if your courgettes aren't that big, uh, then use one and a half. Uh, and then we've got our one teaspoon, one teaspoon, 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 teaspoon of ground turmeric here. Uh, and with ground turmeric, of course, you know, we talked about how amazing it is for your body, blah, blah, blah. But also, you know, what about the flavor? What about the flavor of turmeric? So turmeric is one of those ingredients that I'm always really, really careful with, which was why I was absolutely horrified to see on the ingredients list that it said one tablespoon, because you don't want to add one tablespoon. If you have too much turmeric in food, it has this real kind of like metallic-y taste um, and it takes over everything else and it isn't pleasant at all. So whenever I'm making something like a curry that has turmeric in it, I know, um, to go along this ratio of, you know, half, maybe even quarter of the amount of turmeric to, to the other spices. Um, so, you know, say for example, you know, you've got like um, uh, uh, ground coriander, ground cumin, garam masala, all of those things in there. Uh, and you're putting in like one teaspoon of them, then add either like a quarter of a teaspoon or half a teaspoon, but no more than that of the turmeric. Um, so we always tend to use less of turmeric in a spice mix like that. Um, now with this recipe, 
and it's still quite a lot of turmeric that we're putting in it because we want it we want to uh you know that that's kind of like one of the whole points of this recipe is to get that into our body uh and get the the healing properties of it in but but uh, so we do want a, you know, a good amount of it uh but we can counteract we can balance out that flavor of turmeric and the metallicness of it with our what is meant to be a lime but is a lemon <laughs> so <laughs> my limes didn't arrive um so that's the joys of uh, of online shopping. Uh, I didn't get a lime today, but if you guys have a lime, then use a lime because it goes really, really well. Uh, but you can use a lemon if you want to. But this will balance out that flavour um, of the turmeric. So, um, you know, you do have the option. You guys can use the skin as well if you want to. You can use the zest. Um, it may add like a slight bitterness to it. Uh, but you know that's up to you. Do save save these as well. Save the skins. Um, I just put them into the freezer. Um, if I'm not going to use them right now, I don't even zest them first. I know Nikki would probably tell me off because she told me to do that, but I don't. I don't because I'm lazy. So I whack them in the freezer now, and then when I need to use some zest, uh, then I'll bring them out of the freezer, let them defrost, and then I'll zest them. Um, okay, so. Um, uh, the Riverford courgettes are mini. Mine are Riverford courgettes as well, but mine aren't so small. But that's one of, one of the joys of buying organic uh, vegetables is that you never know what size you're gonna get. Never know. So, yeah. Uh, and I hope that you guys are enjoying your Riverford box. Actually, do let us know. Do let us know. Okay. So let me just see. Ha! <laughs> Colleen says turmeric tastes like clean dirt. That's a really, really good way of putting it. I've gotten used to the flavour. Okay, um, I, uh, thanks, Paul, for uh, letting everybody know how they can um, share this live. Um, Douglas, he has a green lemon. Can I use that? Yeah, why not? Why not? Okay. Um, I always think she shares every time. Thank you, thank you. And Denise does too. Oh, right, okay. Um, now, uh, the rest of the ingredients, we've got a bit of salt, um, uh, but, you know, I've said like a quarter of a teaspoon, but really, you know, you guys have got to decide how much salt you want in it. And then we've got some black pepper. So black pepper helps our body to absorb the turmeric. Um, so we always use uh, some black pepper when we're using turmeric. And then we've got our sweet potato and we'll be making some chips out of that shortly. Um, and they're cheating chips and I'm not going to tell you why they're called cheating chips. Yet. You'll find out later. You'll find out later. Okay, so on to making the hummus. Now, what we need to do is we need to decide with our blender, because you guys might be using a blender like this, or you might be using a hand blender. So we're going to be really, really nice to our blender by having the softest um, ingredient nearer to the blade. So this is um, blender best practice, and this is um, how you can uh, be kind to your blender and you can get the best result of it, basically. So we're gonna put the softest thing that's gonna create the most juice here, which is gonna be our, our, um, our courgette. And so that will give uh, the blender, you know, liquid to, uh, to be able to do its job, basically, to turn everything round. If it gets too dry, then the blender can be going round and round and round, um, and, you know, it can burn out uh, very easily. And it can just be a bit frustrating with us because we're waiting for it to blend and it's not really doing very much at all. Um, so the order that I'm going to put um, it into the blender, I'm just going to make sure that the very last thing to go in will be our courgette, okay? Right. So let's get going. Let me just see if we've got any more questions. Annie says, I can't get room for it here. That's really frustrating. Because, I, yeah, we've had this conversation before, Annie. I was so surprised because, you know, you live in Wales and I would think that you'd be able to get lots of organic veg around there. Such a shame. Um, and Justine said, all gone, getting rid of some fruit and veg and then getting another box. Way better than Tesco. <laughs> yeah, they should do an imperfect box though. Yes, that would be great. Um, and... Da -da -da -da. And da -da. right, okay. So, and Erin said, I love the word courgette. Okay, I'm guessing from that you don't call it courgette <laughs> and you call it 
zucchini instead. But I really like the word zucchini, so. Okay, so let's prep our courgettes. Um, and the only thing that we really have to do with these that, you know, that, that is super important um, is that we have to peel them. We have to peel them. And the reason why is just the colour. It's just the colour. So, you know, we want this to be a proper golden hummus. We don't want it to be like muddy and brown. So we do have to peel these. And then we're going to roughly chop them. Okay. So we just want to make sure that we get all of this skin off because we don't want any of that green making a golden a golden hummus look like muddy hummus. Nobody wants muddy hummus. Yeah, and we'll just roughly chop these. Okay, so anyone who's cooking along at home, peel your courgettes or zucchini and roughly, roughly chop them. So you don't have to chop them into small pieces. Oh, actually, I was only going to do one and a half, wasn't I? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's that's all of my courgette. So now, uh, Justine said, can you use the skin for anything? Uh, I think you could just pop it into a stock. That's probably all you could use it for, really. Because uh, it's not it's not really that nice to eat. You know, like the texture of it. I mean, do you know what, though, Justine? Like, if you want to experiment with it, you could. You could, absolutely. You could try making, like, veggie bacon with it. That would be a good idea, because, you know, you've got, like, the long strips. Why not give it a go? There you go, extra homework for Justine. <laughs> okay, so now uh, we can start putting everything into our blender. Um, so my um, my cashews, I will go and drain those as well as I can, um, just over the sink. Okay, so the cashews are going in first because the cashews are the thing that the blender will struggle with the most. Okay, so we want to be kind to our blender and let it let it blend the thing that's easiest first. And Erin said I had a dream about rice paper bacon. That's a vegan dream if ever I heard one. <laughs> okay. Right, so we've got our um, our cashews in there. I was going to say chickpeas. That would have been confusing. Uh, and then our tahini. And guys, remember, you know, if, you, if you're not sure about the tahini, add a smaller amount of it. Okay, and then we've got our turmeric. And my salt. Our black pepper. Okay. And I'm going to add the juice of this lemon. So, so, of course, you guys might be using lime at home. So, with this, and let me just come over here so I can show you um, the method that I use. So, I always have my hand underneath it, and then as I squeeze it, I slightly open my fingers. So, there we go. <laughs> Um, and so I'll be catching any of the pips, but I can let the juice flow through. And I don't ever use um, a juicer, ever. And with my students at school, I never, I never let them use a juicer either. 
such a tough teacher, honestly. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to put actually quite a lot of lemon juice in mine. There's usually more juice in a lemon than there is in a lime. Uh, but I, I really, I really love sour. You know me. You know me. There we go. Okay. There we go. So that's our lemon juice. Um, and then the final thing that we can put in is our courgette. And as I said repeatedly, um, we want our courgette or zucchini to be blended first because that's going to be the easiest thing for our blender to handle. So we won't have to, or we hopefully won't have to, introduce any water or anything like that into the mix because, you know, if we can help it, like it's better not to. We want all of the flavour uh, from uh, the vegetables that are in there and all of the other ingredients rather than adding any water and diluting it. Okay, so Erin said, why no juicer? It's because I, I can usually get more juice out with my hands than I can with juicer. Um, when I used to have a juicer, what I would find is I would juice it and then I would end up using my hands afterwards because the juicer didn't get all of it. Um, and so, yeah. And also just being a professional chef, like none of the kitchens that I worked in actually had a juicer. We would all just do it with our hands. So, you know, it was an extra bit of kit that we didn't need. And in particularly with the school, like we're always really, really short on space because we have so much equipment. Louisa would attest to that. Um, we have so much equipment that any way that we can uh, reduce the amount of stuff that we have there is better. Okay, so, um, ah, we've got someone from South Africa choosing, tuning, tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> tuning in so I'm gonna have a go at your note and I'm really really sorry if I say it wrong uh Tahira Tahira that's a lovely name really really lovely name okay so now we can take our um our jug blender uh, and pop it onto into here there we go and start it up Every now and again, you probably didn't hear that. Every now and again, <laughs> you'll need to stop it and just make sure that it's all coming down. Uh, so I do want to, as I said, really try not to add any water if I can help it. Sometimes we do need to though with things like this, just to get it going and moving around. <laughs> We love kitchen co. We do. We do. We do. We do. So if you um, just caught a glance of that, me tapping on the top. So with a blender like this, when it is this way around, it is really, really useful to do that, Where, especially when it's like a thick mixture, you know, it all gets like caught up the sides and it's not going down into the blade. So anything that we can do um, to safely um, get that those ingredients into the blade is a really, really good thing. So you can see now, like it's really starting to, uh, to mix together a lot better. <laughs> And I can still hear that there are cashews that are 
uh, not quite ground yet. Um, so one of the most important things I think when you're using a blender is to get to know the sounds of it. Um, and also be very aware of any smells too, because if you start smelling um, burning, it could be that the motor is starting to burn out. So there are some blenders that will cut out when that happens as like a kind of safeguard thing. Uh, but if you smell anything like that, by the way, I can't smell it at the moment, don't worry. Um, then, <laughs> then uh, just turn it off. And usually, usually they're okay, they just need to cool down uh, for a while, but do uh, bear that in mind. Um, Janet said, have you ever used a mini cuisine? Or it might be easy to have the ingredients on the bottom instead of the top. Yeah, it depends which way around you wanna do it. Um, as long as the, the courgette or the zucchini is hitting the blades first, it doesn't really matter. I like using a Nutri, Nutri, what it, Nutri Ninja, which one is it? Ninja, Nutri Ninja, because I find that with cashews, it gets it really, really, really creamy with these very, very high speed blenders. Um, whereas you with um, food processors, like not so much. But at the school, we do have some um, Maggi mix blenders, but they're the really tiny ones. So something like that would be absolutely fine. It's just that this is what I've got. This is what I've got at home. So. <laughs> is really really lovely really lovely um so i find it not too bright you know i don't like it to be um to look like neon because you know I, that's one of my issues with um scrambled tofu that uses too much turmeric it can look like it's radioactive and then to me like that just doesn't look very tasty um so let me just see how we're getting on doing well we're doing well so you know it's really nice and thick and creamy I'm just make sure that they're all blended in I'm gonna give it one more go and then that will be it um so let me just pop this pop this onto a little dish rather than onto my wooden board because we don't want to stain it um uh, and as you will see you know every now and again you know I'm stopping I am making the mixture go back down into the blades. And so with something like this, when it's like so thick and creamy, you don't just wanna turn it on and leave it uh, because that is one way that you will burn out um, the, the motor of this. Um, and this actually has settings on it. It has this uh, ultra, ultra blend and blend where it will actually start it and stop and start and stop. And that's because they know that things like get caught up the sides and then you need to stop and let all of those ingredients come back down into the blades and then you blend it again. Okay, last time. So Annie said that she broke her Vitamix by blending the little plastic bit the lid. Oh no! Oh, you might be able to get replacement parts for it though, Annie. I don't know if you looked into that, um, but that is that is an option. That is an option. Okay, so there we go. Really nice and creamy. Really beautiful colour as well. Um, taste it now and see if you need to add anything else to it. Tastes really zingy, really, really flavoursome. Of course, you know, you guys can add garlic as well to it if you want to. Either um, actual, like, fresh garlic or, um, you know, garlic granules, garlic salt, like, that type of thing. I like it as it is because I think that it's just, it's quite fresh. Um, so I'm quite happy with it as it is. But you don't, you guys can just make it your own, um, you know, it's your own adventure. Uh, Erin said, do you sneak a taste as you cook? Well, actually... As a chef, you have to, you have to. Um, and it's something that is, is good to like get into the habit of doing um, because you should really be tasting your food all the time as you cook um, to make sure that it's got the right seasoning, and, you know, that type of thing. Okay, so now we're gonna make our cheese and chips. 
And so we need uh, to get our, um, our sweet potato um, and our mandolin or our very, very sharp knife. So basically, this is like a real, real cheat, but it's something that I found that a lot of people just don't know about, which is to make um, raw uh, sweet potatoes. So we're gonna keep the, um, the skin on um, and we're just gonna slice them really, really finely. So you need to slice them fine enough so that we can uh, just eat them as they are, but they can't be too fine uh, because we're gonna wanna scoop the, um, uh, the hummus up with it. Um, so I'm just gonna see how this is. There we go. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. So we've got to hold this up to up to our overhead cam so that you guys can see. That that's how thin I've made them. So sweet potato can be eaten raw. It's absolutely fine. Sorry about the cat hair on there. Cat hairs get everywhere. So, um, yeah, so they can be eaten raw and they are so, so, so lovely. Um, not only because of the taste of them, but also because of the lovely colour as well. Really, really lovely colour. Um, and kids love them. Kids really, really love them because, you know, they get to um, uh, pick up food uh, with their hands, which, you know, I mean, I love that. So. <laughs> and so that is it, basically. We just make our chips there we go and that is that is it that is it people like how amazing is that so we can just pop these onto our plate there we go there we go bring you guys over here so you can see what i'm doing and so there we've got our there you go you can see that there we've got our chips and our beautiful, colourful hummus. There we go, beautiful colours on the plate together. And just to finish off, I'm going to add uh, something that I really, really like to add uh, to hummus because I, I really like the colours together, um, which is sumac. So sumac is, is a spice, it's quite sour. Um, so again, you know, I really love my sour, but I really, really love the colours together. Because it's this kind of like mauve, mauve colour. And I think that mauve colour with the yellow of the golden hummus is beautiful. I really, really like it. But, you know, you guys can decorate it however you want. Um, or just have it as it is. Because, you know, it's bright enough. It's bright enough that you don't really need... Um, that you don't really need any decoration. It's beautiful, really, really beautiful. There we go. How easy is that? It, it, it's like a painting on a plate, honestly. <laughs> I mean, it's like a kid's painting on a plate, but still, still. Uh, Erin said, how pretty. Yeah, it is a beautiful colour, Annie. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Doug said that he needs a mandolin. Yeah, I, I really, really like them. I think that they're absolutely great. But if you've got a steady hand and a sharp knife, then you can definitely do this. Um, so, um, mm, yeah, if you people didn't know uh, that you can do this with sweet potatoes. Mm. Oh, good. Annie's going to see if she can have it repaired, her Vitamix, because, you know, it's a Vitamix and they're expensive things. So, but, um, yeah, I think have a look online. And well, I don't even need to wait for Denise to remind me to have some of this. So, Okay, so guys, um, I hope that anybody who's been cooking along at home, or creating along at home, <laughs> has enjoyed making this recipe. Let me know how you get on. Let me know if you made any additions as well. You know, you guys can always like change these things up. The only thing I would say with the golden hummus is don't add anything that's gonna change the color, you know? But then that gives you like a wide expanse of like different things that you can add to it. Um, just you know, we want we want it to be we want it to be um as bright and beautiful as possible. Um, so uh, Denise says that looks like a sunny day, chef day. It does, it does actually. Um, George said, how wide is your mandolin? Five inch? Oh, I don't know. One, two, three, four. It's about six inches, I think. Um, and this is one from Nisbet's, or is it Nesbit's? 
I always confuse Nisbet's. Nisbet's, yeah. So Nisbet's is it's a catering like supply shop, um, but uh, people who are not people who are just like the general public can buy from them as well. Really, 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 really great stuff. Um, all like the professional um, chef kit, but also things that are going to last a really, really long time. So um, I prefer buying things that, um, you know, they might not be like really pretty, but I know that they're going to last a lifetime. They're really, really hard wearing. And you know that they're hard wearing because uh, people who have restaurants use them. Um, so, you know, I've got like tongs and my mandolin and um, a microplane, you know, and, and lots of things that we get, get for the school, you know, are that type of thing. Um, so do check them out if you're interested. That's Nesbitt's. Just Google it and you'll find it. Um, anyway, <laughs> Jesse said, add a tortilla chips instead of potato. That's a, I like that idea. Yes. Uh, Erin said, thank you. No, 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 no problem at all. But the pleasure is all mine. Uh, the Hera says, that's going to be a first for me. Raw sweet potatoes, looking forward to it. It's so easy. It's really, really, really so easy. And it's such like, I love these things that are like really easy to do and really healthy because quite often with food, the easiest thing for us to do can usually be like the process thing. Um, but you know, this is a really, really good hack for people who wanna be healthy and don't have a lot of time. So great for a summery day like today. Jules says, thanks, trying to decide whether I should get one. That looks like a Japanese berina. Yes, it is a Japanese one. It's got Japanese writing on, on there. Um, but I don't know if that to make. But yeah, this was from Nesbitt's. This was from Nesbitt's actually. I think it was like about 25 quid. I bought it. Gosh, six years ago, something like that. Um, oh, there we go, Christine. Thank you, Nisbet. There we go. Some weirdest, weirdest word. So, um, but yeah, I bought it about six years ago, and I haven't had to change the blade yet, and I use it an awful lot. So, really, I do recommend this one definitely. Um, and Justine says I'm starting to like hummus. Hummus is like such a flexible thing, babe. Like. You know, so you can really like make it your own. Uh, Gloria said, do you not shop at Lakeland? No, I don't. I find a lot of their stuff is, like, it looks really nice. Um, it's quite expensive. And I'm not sure that it's going to last a long time. And so, you know, I do use my equipment a lot. I give it quite a good beating. Um, so, not literally. Uh, so, I, uh, yeah, so I tend to go for the Nesbit stuff. Um, or, you know, some similar uh, I also get things from um, so it's Chef's Table and Sous Chef as well. Sous Chef is a good um, a good place to also get ingredients too. So um, Annie says, I'm interested to try the sweet potatoes. And it is, it is, and it's so simple. Um, and your grandson would love it. Your grandson would really, really love it because, you know, kids like bright stuff and they like being able to pick up food with their fingers. Uh, so Justine says... And I ate um, roasted peas, but you don't like peas. What's going on? Um, Denise said, thank you. Uh, David, thank you for the puppy heart. And uh, George said, I will have to get it with cut proof gloves. You do need to be careful, but you know, you don't necessarily, um, like if you're worried about it, use the gloves. There are also um, uh, like plastic things with spikes in them that you can put on the end of vegetables so that your fingers don't get anywhere near the plate. So that is also an option. Um, okay, so thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, please do share your pictures of your golden hummus in uh, in the community hub. That would be great, that would be really, really good. And of course, um, as always, have a really, really, really lovely Saturday. Okay, promise? Promise, promise.